That's Hunter. what's going on with you guys man another episode of monday night take here super duper excited for tonight's show um you know it's just me tonight solo dolo tonight shout out to tr she'll be back next week um you know definitely got a lot of things to talk about so you guys see the topic here tonight the top five trading strategies and experience for beginners tonight i'm going to talk to you guys a lot really about my journeys right um we're going to talk about the ups and the downs right i think a lot of times you know, uh, you know, people discount, you know, maybe the losses that they've incurred, right? Or, or, or people discount, you know, just overall, you know, what you can potentially learn, in my opinion, from being a, a being someone that just has experience over time, right? Like there's certain things that I learned, you know, throughout my period in my time when it came to trading and investing. And it was crazy that, you know, it took what I would say, um you know a multitude of years to be able to garner the information that i have now it took you know multiple accounts being blown um it, it was some some great times you know huge wins like all of those different things i think like go into the process of you understanding who you are as a trader you know maybe what strategies work for you and this is an episode for people that may just be getting may just be beginning their journey just getting started like this is something that probably is going to be inspiring for you. So, y'all, I'm going to just go ahead and pretty much get right into it. Um, let's talk about the start, right? Um, I think everyone kind of has their own unique and interesting story when they get started with the stock market and um, invest in just anything in general. For me, my start pretty much really happened when I was a senior in high school, right? I was a senior in high school and you know, one of the things that actually transpired and happened for me was I was blessed to really have a great economics teacher. And his name is Mr. Postel, right? Mr. Postel, uh, I feel like it, it wasn't that he maybe look at the stock market, but he kind of sat me down and, you know, I was breezing through economics. You know, it was like, you know, pretty much like because I was interested in it. And so, you know, I was pretty much breezing through it and it was it was easy to me. Right um you know you're, you're learning about u.s economics you're learning about money and i felt like really my senior year in high school taking economics i felt like that was really the first time that i was really starting to have those money conversations right like i didn't grow up in a household where in my opinion money was talked about a lot right and at the time i was pretty much um you know when i was a, ju a junior in high school um you know i was about 15 years old i ended up getting my first job right i was working at a pizza restaurant here in atlanta and um you know that was my first that was like really my first job outside of when i was 13 i was passing out flyers and i was sweeping in the barbershop um there's still people that you know remember me to this day and i would say that i always looked at as i started to you know even that little bit of money that i was getting at that time i respected it but i always you know i counted for every dollar every cent so I felt like I was always, you know, good with money, right? I felt like I was always good with money. And the reason why, I, the reason why I say I felt like I was always good with money is because the way that I kind of respected it and, and treated it. For me, like money was always a, a tool, a tool and a resource that I could use, right? I always looked at money as a tool and, and a resource that I could use like myself. So what... I looked at it was is like when I first started got started, I was already a good, someone that was a good steward and a good saver, right? So I never really had an issue and a problem like saving money. Um, what I started to look at and what I started to understand was what happened for me was I looked at like the time that I was putting in working, right? But then I also take the look at the time that you know my family members were putting in. I'm like, yo, they're putting in X amount of Z hours um and just i looked at it i'm like yo when i started taking a look at other races right 
I'm like, yo, I don't I didn't see any black people investing in the stock market at the time. Right. It wasn't anybody online that I was looking at or there wasn't really anybody talking about stocks or or, or investments in, you know, anything in that realm. And it intrigued me. Um, it was interesting to me. And as I started to study uh, Mr. Postel, what he challenged me to do was start taking a look at the whole world economics, country by country. Every country that I went that I that I was going to and I was going down, you know, like I said, I was going down the barrier. Every country that I was going to, going to when I was taking a look, the wealthiest people were always people that invested in the stock market or invested in real estate in their individual country. Right. You know, whether I was in Asia, whether I was in Australia. So I just seen all of these different things. And then I started to think, all right, I started to get into, well, what are the top companies in America? And I start obviously came across, you know, you you taking a look and you're saying you're seeing Apple, Amazon, Microsoft up there. You're seeing Google up there. And I'm like, yo, these are all things that I'm like, yo, I got an iPhone. All my friends got iPhones. Everyone in the school got iPhones. Everyone, for the most part, that I know has an iPhone. Got a couple Androids here and there. Right. And I was seeing that. And I'm like, yo, like for me, I'm like, man, like I got the opportunity for myself to really take a take a step and be able to see like the stuff that we're consuming i could you know what i'm saying i could literally be putting that stuff to to use and i started like i started like once again i started to take a look at my wants and my desires and i started taking a look at things a lot differently you know as well me myself one thing that i felt like i was um you know me myself that i looked at was I wanted to start making money from things that I wanted. So like, for example, I'm a, for those that don't know, I'm a big Jordan fan, right? So I know Nike. And so I'm like, okay, if I can start to make money from investing in Nike, that can fund the things that I wanted with, you know, buying Jordans. So that was kind of like, like I said, my, 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 my start when it came to like investing, trading, whatever you want to call it. That was my start was being able to take a look at what I was not only giving my time to, but also what I was giving my money to. Right. And as I started to like go through that process, it was um, it was super humbling to me. Like, I'll be honest with you, it was super humbling to me to see that the wealthiest people in the world was all people that invested in the stock market or all people that invested in real estate. And from there you know i was a senior in high school you know i studied those different things but like i said i took it serious so i was the person that was like yo i'm gonna take this stuff serious and you know i'm just continue to rock out and what i did was as i was taking that as i was taking that stuff seriously you know i got into then long-term investing right so at the time when i when i was in high school i was still 17 years old so I had obviously had to wait till I was 18 to pretty much open a brokerage account. I don't think I really asked my mom, you know, I wasn't like, okay, I need to open a brokerage account. I was just intrigued with the learning process. So I spent pretty much the rest of my senior year, you know, just studying um, and just reading, studying, reading, came across Investopedia and Investopedia was like, to me, it was like the Bible, right? Um, you know, everything that I was reading on Investopedia was just informative, informational. Um, and it, it just always, uh, everything on Investopedia just always made sense to me, right? Like on Investopedia, it made sense to me when I was taking a look at, you know, uh, studying, you know, the debt to income ratios, right? I'm just like, okay, so now I see how companies, you know, have you know debt to free cash right how much money they're bringing in so i just started like studying different stuff it's all new to me and i wanted to be a sponge so i also looked at it and said yo if i want to take this seriously um i need capital um so my start was also me putting my pride aside and even though at that time i really didn't need to get a second job you know i started to look for a second job because i'm like all right if I'm going to take this seriously, I want to take it. I want to go all the way in. I want to make sure that I actually have enough capital to actually invest. And that was when I was like, now I'm like getting ready. I graduated high school at 17. You know, I'm getting ready to go to college and I'm like, okay, 
I need to make sure that I have more capital. So what can I do? I'm, I'm looking for, you know, an extra job. So instead of like my freshman year in college, doing the freshman party out, like I'm pretty sure you guys know a lot of people that you probably went to school with freshman year. Hell, most, some of them probably didn't make it past first semester or the first year. My goal was like, yo, forget all that. I'm gonna skip all that. And I'm gonna just focus on getting an extra job. And that's how I'm gonna use my time, right? Obviously, a college is a different schedule. You don't have classes every single day and you don't have classes as long as, you know, like going to school from, you know, 9 to 3 p.m., like how you were, you know, pretty much when you were in, um, you know, grade school, right, in, in high school. So I always looked at that, too. You know, that was something for me that I honestly, I'll be honest with you, I, I really enjoyed. Um, I really enjoyed that, like 100 percent. I, I really honestly, really enjoyed um the working process because it made me appreciate my time and i just took a look and i said yo the same companies that we go to work for i'm like yo these companies are making billions of dollars now another eye-opening thing for me was the experience of taking a look at time right i was i was honestly observing it and watching and taking a look at the market and i was seeing that you had companies like procter and gamble Right. That was, you know, one of the one of the first companies I really started to do a fundamental analysis on. And as I started to break down Procter & Gamble, I said, yo, almost everything in my household. Right. Comes from this company, from the toothpaste to the to the laundry detergent to the toilet tissue. You know, I'm looking and I'm like, yo, PG, I've been seeing this my whole life. And I was looking at I'm like, yo. This has been right in front of my face. So it started to, like I said, all of these things started to like piece, piece itself together. So that was kind of, like I said, my journey and, and how I, you know, how I first got started, you know, with trading and with investing. Right. So like I said, that was for me, like super, super duper important, you know, for me, like I said, for, for myself to understand and for me to highlight, because it, it, like I said, it changed, it changed my perspective on, on life. So once I got through that, you know, at that point in time, I'm like, okay, cool. So now, you know, I, I went through that phase, got through all of that. I'm like, okay, well, what's next? Pretty much what's next after that for me, how I view things was like, okay, cool. If I'm able to really, if I'm able to really sit here and now understand how to evaluate companies, if I understand the time effective cost of my money, how much my money is actually worth, how much my time is actually worth. Like if I'm able to actually understand all those different things, I can then put those things into use. And so I started re I started really being a long term investor first, just for the simple standpoint that it was the easiest thing to do. Right. It made the most sense. Now, one of the things that I was reading was you should always be paying attention to right things around you. Right. The way that the world is changing. Some people may call it what, what we call innovation. So I really tried to take a look at like when I first got started investing, trading, I tried to take a look at things from a lens of innovation. Right. So I would always go in and listen to, you know, I'm a big listener. So when I get around a lot of people, especially family members, friends, you know, a lot of times I'm quiet, but a lot of people don't know this is because I'm, I'm actually ready to listen. I want to take a, I want to take advantage and and be able to listen and learn. And the reason why I want to be able to listen and learn is because if I'm able to hear something and then go ahead and make sense of it and go find a company that may be solving maybe an issue that maybe I'm seeing a group of collected people have um, or maybe making an improvement in an area of life that I know a lot of people will, will tap on to. Uh, that was like really where my first investments kind of were sparked from. Um, and, you know, certain things like that I invested in early on was like, you know, things like Shopify, things like Tesla. And these were things that I invested in because I seen not only the way that they could change and reshape the world, but also I seen the way that people would go, you know, go crazy, you know, for those things. Right. You know, whether um, they're solving issues, solving problems. Right. Or. Um, maybe they're changing something in the environment like Tesla did. Right. I always looked at things for me, like when I when I came to investing and in, in, in trading, I wanted to be able to make sense of it. 
And I guess the best way that I made sense of it was just by sitting back and just listening and observing and not and being the person that says, hey, you know, I'm willing to understand that, you know, other people in the room know more than me. Right. And that was kind of like, like I said, once again, how I got my start in trading and investing was being willing to say, hey, I can learn a lot from just paying attention to those little details. So those little details, like I said, were were like super, super duper important. So for my investing, my 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 number one investing strategy that I used, you know, in the beginning was paying attention to the overall environment around myself. Right. And I realized that nine times out of 10, you can find the best investments based upon the issues and the things that are happening around you. If you just kind of pay attention and listen. So one of the things that I was was really seeing that was happening, right? Um, the evolution of Instagram was pretty much happening in 2016 and 2017. All right. And, you know, online marketing, et cetera, you know, was advancing, et cetera. And one thing that I always see, I, I would always see like, you know, people selling items, right? I would start seeing people selling their own brands and selling their own clothes and setting up websites. And I would see even brands and clothes that maybe I didn't know, but it would be targeted to me from an Instagram ad. And I just paid attention. The one thing that I kept seeing was at the bottom of all these different people's websites, right? Was shop, shop. I kept seeing shop, shop. So I'm like, okay, what is shop? Right. And, and I'm, I'm intrigued at that point. Right. It keeps popping up on me. Um, you know, I'm interested. I'm, I'm like, OK, what is shop? Let me start to research. The, I start to take a look and, you know, research online. I realized that Shopify is a Canadian company. Um, you know, I'm taking a look at it. I'm like, OK, this is a this is a Canadian company. You know, I'm analyzing all this data and I'm real. I'm seeing who the founder is, who the CEO is. I'm seeing what their, what their purpose is, what their mission is. Like, oh, I'm seeing all of those different things. And, you know, when I took a look at, like I said, when I took a look at, at Shopify, I'm like, yo, um, I'm like, yo, this, this platform right here is, is amazing. Like, I looked at Shopify and I was like, yo, this, this right here is just pure, pure, pure amazing, right? The platform that they have. And I was able to compare and see Okay, where, well, where did they fit in? So, you know, I'm paying attention to Amazon. You know, early on in my in my investment journey, um, you know, I actually saw, um, you know, that Amazon actually um, had some issues with third party sellers, right? And this was kind of like, like I said, in my first first three years, Amazon was having issues with third party sellers. And a lot of those third party sellers actually took their talents and, you know, wanted to create their own uh, products and services and then sell them their own all by themselves without using Amazon. And it really came out to be, to be honest with you, you know, that, uh, you know, the best platform to use was Shopify at that time. A lot of people were navigating. Now, what happened is, is that what I also analyzed was I looked at Alibaba, right? And I was a big Alibaba fan, right, in the beginning. Um, I used to trade Ali, Alibaba was one of my top five stocks that I used to trade in the beginning process. And what I was able to understand was I was like, yo, Alibaba is actually sitting here and allowing people to buy their items in bulk and then they can repurpose them and create their own products and then resell them online. I was looking at that, I'm like, yo, that's, I was looking at it, I was like, yo, it's genius. Genius, 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 genius. So for me, I was like, yo, I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, I then started to see what companies were correlated together. So that, like I said, that was really how, once again, I got my, my start in my investment process was me being able to correlate, right, my investments based upon sectors. And then I started understanding sectors and different things and, and seeing how those things were correlated. So mind you, I'm walking all into all of this as an open book. I think a lot of times as once again, as new traders, new investors, I think one of the biggest things that I can say is strategies is don't overwhelm yourself. One of the things that I would say I was happy about was the fact that 
I did not overwhelm myself, right? I did not, I wasn't that person that felt like, okay, I got to come out here and, you know, be a trader. Like, and the crazy thing was, I didn't even, even when, when I, when I told you guys my first start in this, like a, a year into it, I didn't even know, I didn't even know in 2016, I didn't even know what options were. I wasn't a trader. I was just studying. And I think that was the best thing was just stepping into the realm of, you know, being able to take in the data, analyze the data. Right. I think that was probably one of the best things was me being able to do that because it took the pressure off me. It allowed me to be able to be patient with myself and not really rush things. So I think, like, like I said, that was another one of the most important things that I pretty much enjoyed with this process and with this journey um, was, like I said, allowing myself the ability to just be patient with, with things. And I was able to see how everything pretty much lined up and I was able to compare and contrast. So, you know, I was working at that point, my freshman year of college, I was working like six days a week. Um, like I was like, yo, I want to garner as much capital as possible to invest in these things because I literally was telling myself like, yo, the next five to 10 years, the world will be different. And if I invest in these different things, then I'll put myself in a, in a way better position, a way, way, way better position in life. And it was kind of crazy to see, because I'll be honest with you, a lot of the different investments that I made at the time, I never really honestly expected them to, um, to perform the way that they did. Um, but it was crazy to kind of see the fact that it actually did happen, right? The way that it kind of happened. It was crazy to kind of see, you know, how certain investments, you know, went up and went down over a period of time. So I think like, once again, I think like, like I said, all of that for me made, made sense. Like everything made sense to me. Being a long-term investor was just the kind of the easiest thing to hop into and was the easiest thing for, uh, like I said, for, for me myself to do. And I think a lot of times people underestimate the long-term investment aspect inside first because, um, you know, I think I think sometimes there may be a little bit of uh, what I would say there were, may be a little bit uh, overwhelmed. So, like I said, the the overwhelming part um, of of things. Now, my first, I want to go through some of my first trading strategies. Like, what were some of the ways that I first actually started to trade? Um, and a lot of it was based off economics. I'll be honest with you. A lot of things were based off economics. We obviously had, like, I, I think also one of the best things that happened to me was when, when I first started trading, that was actually in um, the beginning of 2018, right? When I first started trading in the beginning of 2018, I had already had, like, pretty much two years experience, right? One year of just studying, learning, everything, right? And... I also would say was that we had a president that was super volatile. So Donald Trump was crazy, man. Like um, the things he would say, the things he would do um, were crazy, were cr absolutely crazy. Like he would set the world on fire, you know, all the time, right? The things he would come out and say and, you know, point out, you would be like, yo, he really said that. But I think that volatility allowed me to really be able to, uh, Put myself in a position where you know i'm analyzing things and i'm re i'm seeing how to, a twitter account could affect the market so i think that was one one thing that was easier for me was like yo if i'm able to pay attention to you know if i'm able to pay attention to the little things and pay attention to how the president may speak or a federal reserve person may come out and speak right or maybe there's some sort of economic report that could influence the market. That was really how I first started basing my trade, you know, my trades off of. And also um, paying attention, obviously, to, to factual news, not just opinionated news, but factual news. So some of my best individual trades in the beginning were, you know, based upon facts that I collected from all of those different things that I listed. Um, and I was able to understand economics so that helped me understand market cycles a lot easier right so um when i first got started i wasn't just a i wasn't someone that was just maybe you know more so just the technical based person you know i was someone who took 
like I said, in account everything. I took in account literally everything into my consideration. So I, like I said, I loved when I was able to, uh, you know, go ahead and, you know, once again, piece everything together. I love that. Being able to piece everything together um, was something that I enjoyed. So, like I said, for me, um, you know, it came down to when it came down to trading in the beginning, um, a lot of it was based upon current news, current events, economic things, all of those different things. Right. So, like I said, for me, I like, yo, if I can get this stuff down and nail it down, it makes it easier for me. Bottom line. Now, also. One lesson that I learned and, and experienced was in 2018, we went through, right, the Federal Reserve interest rates that were being hiked a few times. And one of the things that we really went through was we actually um, we actually were able to see um, the Federal Reserve interest rate hikes, how they actually were able to come in and affect the market. But I also was able to see how the Federal Reserve chairman speaking can move the market up and down. Uh, I was using things like the VIX, right? The VIX was one of the, you know, the first, uh, you know, macro level type indicators that I use from a from a from a uh, investment standpoint. The VIX, the VIX. I'll be honest with you. Um, when I took a, when I used the VIX and seen how the VIX behavior directly influenced, you know, the SPY, the QQQ, and the DIA. Um, I realized like, OK, every time that the VIX was, you know, up maybe three, four five percent in the morning, I would realize the correlation, how the SPY, the QQQ and the DIA would be down. So I started using the VIX as a tool. Right. And that became one part of my trading strategies, even even still to this day. Right. When I started to see that the VIX is getting, you know, to, to a low point and I'm seeing how the VIX is, uh, you know, actually coming down. And, and pulling back now, and I'm seeing how the VIX is pulling back now. When I see that, and I see how the VIX is, like I said, pulling back down, I'm able to understand, okay, as it's breaking below 20, I understand that the market is going to actually, um, you know, go up, right? Excuse me, that the market is uh, going to go up when it's breaking below 20, right? And it's coming down. When the VIX is coming down, I understand that buyers are stepping back in. Right. And a lot of that stuff I learned from 2018. And it was super important in the trading process and in the trading journey because I'm now able to, um, you know, take a look at those things and be able to make decisions off of it. So my first like once again, my my first trades were even using something like the VIX because I was able to, like I said, piece everything together. So the VIX was, you know, one of my one of my top trading strategies and still is. You know, because it, I, I like it because it's simple. You know, when the VIX is below, you know, below 20, but then it's starting to crack above 20, you know, that sellers are coming in. Or if it breaks above 30, you know, that selling is probably going to really get aggressive for real, for real. So like all of like all taking it, everything, everything into account there, um, you know, I, I looked at it and and it just like I said, it, it made pretty much all the sense in the world for, for myself. Right. Uh, so I loved it. I loved you. Like I said, I loved using the VIX. Um, the VIX to me was, like I said, one of the best indicators that I personally had used at the time. And it took away a lot of the noise. So um, just looking at those different patterns and those trends, uh, my experience as well. Let's talk about some of the um, I would say some of the losses, man. Um, I could relate to even 2018. Right. Um, I had invested in AMD, um, Tesla, Shopify, um, Facebook, um, Square. Um, a lot of the investments that I, I had made towards the end of, 20, you know, pretty much in 2017 and um, 2018, a lot of the investments that I had made originally, um, you know, in 2018 started to take a hit, you know, drop, you know, 20, some drop 20, 30, some drop 50%. And, you know, I took a look at it and said, you know, man, this this thing really pulled back. And I was like, yo, it's it's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, and I think in the moment when you're kind of new to things, right, as a beginner, 
you know, when you see 40% of your, the things that you bought, right? The, the stocks that you bought, when you see those things decline like that, it could do one or two things psychologically. Um, it could make you be like, yo, what did I get myself into? Or it could kind of be like a wake up call. Like, yo, I need to do something. I need to, you know, buy more. Like this is an opportunity. It could do really one or two things. And I think when the market fell in 2018, I think I, it motivated me, but I, Looking back at it, I'm like, yo, obviously you only know what you know at the time, right? But knowing what I know now, and that's why I kind of treat things like when the market is dropping now, you'll hear me talk about opportunity, 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 because you truly never know how long the market is going to give you those opportunities and stay down, right? If you're taking a look at, if you took a look at the bottom of 2018, literally December 24th after that, the market flew out of there like a bat out of hell and never looked back until COVID happened. Then COVID was a month and a half, and then the market catapulted again. So when you think about that, I think that was just really like a, just a good example of just showing you, like, for me, a learning experience, especially as a beginner, don't discount the price that you currently have right now. Don't feel like, okay, man, like that price I got it's going to be here forever because there's honestly, I'll be honest with you. There's going to be some, some times where, you know, you're going to be taking a look at, and, you know, price, you know, certain prices of certain stocks, you know, are own are, in my opinion, are only going to go up and, you know, you want to take advantage as much as possible of those companies, you know, that are actually, you know, like I said, that are trading sideways right now that might've declined and might not, be looking the prettiest at the moment like you want to take advantage of those so i would say that was another thing that i really had to like for myself i really had to um you know take that into account and really had to uh learn like learn those things so once again that was like i said that was another another thing that i was really uh like i said really serious about and um it once again it it, it made me those are one of the the learning lessons that i was able to have so, you know, seeing, you know, my money decline like that in a quick instant, um, it's discouraging. It definitely is. Um, but I would say that still acting on it, taking advantage. One thing that I realized was as the market came down, my dollars are going to go farther. So like that stock that I might have bought at $70 that might be 55 or 45 now, I can buy more of it at 45 and bring that average cost down. So that was a good valuable lesson for me in the beginning. So I looked at it like, okay, cool. Did the company change or did just the stock price change? So it started making me analyze, you know, what was the difference between the stock and the company? How were they different? All right. And, you know, when I take a look at the difference between the stock and the company now, I'm able to better differentiate it based upon what I've learned in the past. You see, like in 2018, and, and I'll be honest with you, even now, there's certain company stock price that probably declined that wasn't necessarily just based upon the company. It's based upon the environment as well, too. Right. So I looked at it. I, I look at things that way as well. Um, I'm not really a big indicator person, you know, so one of my I guess one of the top things that I would say is. I'm not the big indicator person because any indicator, you know, in my opinion, lags price, right? Like price comes first. So my overall, you know, like my overall number one thing is to be able to understand where price is going, right? It's not to be relying heavy on this indicator to tell me. It's about me being able to see price break above a level or break below a level. So like I said, that was something that I pretty much, you know, also as well in the beginning process, technical analysis does take a lot of time. You're not just going to look at a chart one time, hell, two times, three times, four times, five times, 10 times, 20 times, and just be able to be like, okay, I'm, I'm super efficient at it. Super, super duper efficient at it. Um, so that's a, that's another thing. Uh, the experience that I would say with, um, the mistakes that I guess I would say I made in trading, right? Um, I think sometimes in the beginning, 
and I, I think a lot of times when it comes to trading, um, we get like for one trading. I, I like I don't know how you guys feel about this, but this this how I feel about it. Like in the beginning process and and, and throughout, right? Like trading is is one of the probably the fastest ways, and not even just about fast money, but just even being able to make X amount of dollars in a certain period of time is just foreign to people, right? Especially to a new person. You like, yo, I made what? I made X amount of dollars today or X amount of dollars in 30 minutes trading the spy or trading, you know what I'm saying? Trading whatever, right? I think if you don't manage that the right way, it, it can be something that um can throw you off. Like I remember me being in college. Like I was I used to, I used to trade during my college lectures and classes. I'm I'm not ashamed to say it. You know, because that that's what was keeping me in school. Um was being able to trade and and and, and fund my life from that. So that's what was able to keep me in school. Uh, but I think there needs to be a balancing act as well, too. I think sometimes when it comes to trading, we sometimes can get super overwhelmed when it comes to trading, right? Uh, we can get overwhelmed with it, especially in the beginning process and even throughout, right? It can become super over overwhelming. So I would say that, you know, experiences from myself in the beginning was like feeling that rush of, you know, okay, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. Because it's kind of like we're told in the beginning, we're told all throughout life. If you're not consistently doing something, then you're doing something wrong. Whereas in trading, sometimes the best move is to do nothing. Sometimes the best thing is to just sit still, not press any buttons, just sit back and wait. So I think that's something that you have to kind of unlearn some psychological things because, you know, you're told probably you, if you don't finish your work, you're going to get a bad grade. If you don't go to work and you're not working 24 seven on your computer or taking meetings 24 seven from nine to five, then you're going to be fired. Right. Whereas in the stock market, if you don't take a trade from 930 to four, if you just didn't take a trade, then there's no consequence. Right. It actually might have helped you because it, it may have avoided a loss that you would have taken or whatever. Right. So it's unlearning those different things as well that you have to do. All right. So we're going to run through. Um, a couple more things here, right? The five things that, you know, because I, I was asked this question um, before someone kindly sent me a DM and seen the topic for tonight and said, Lawrence, I know you're going to talk about, you know, five different, you know, uh, you know, trading strategies and experiences for beginners. Um, but could you give me five things that you would do over again, right? If you could do it over. Um, num so I I'll go through that. I, I felt like that was a great question. So number, 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 we'll go in order of five to one. We'll do that. So number five, if there was some number five, I would say I would, I would, I would put more, I would, you see, that was, that was difficult to, to really say, but I would, I would definitely say number five would be, I would uh, put more money to my overall investments in the beginning. Um, it's tough to say because in the beginning, once again, you only know what you know, right? Um, but that would be one thing. Obviously, knowing what I know now, I would have put more money towards certain things. Number four, um, I would, number four in the beginning, I would have listened to less CNBC. Um, that would be number four. <laughs> and no disrespect. Number three, um, I would say that I would have probably moved to a, a, an advanced brokerage account off the rip. I don't think that I would have just started on Robinhood, you know, in 2017. I think I would have obviously probably started off with an advanced broker uh, right off the bat. So number three. Number two. Um, see, this one, two and one was kind of like back and forth. Number two. Um and I know so I know some people get a laugh out of this. <laughs> if if I could do something over again, I think um and it's funny, but number two would be um I would actually start selling options sooner. Cause I had a hundred shares of a lot of stuff, and I didn't understand in the beginning the selling options piece, right? Um, I didn't understand how valuable it could have been in the beginning process, right? Once again, you only know 
what you know. What you don't know, you're going to find out later. So I would say number two, would, uh, you know, I would, I would start selling options a lot sooner. Um, and then number one, um, I would say, I would say selling, I would say, uh, I already said selling options. That's why I said it was tough because I really wanted to say selling options, number one. But um, I also would say like if I could do one more thing over again, um, I would have there was this one there was this one well I can't like once again you can't really I can't even really say that because that was just part of that was just part of the process um I think I'm gonna just use I'm, I think I'm gonna just use the the last one the selling options piece as number one those would be because the other one I, I I don't think you could really say that because that's just kind of something that you're just you know piecing together just because you know what you know now um but yeah that, those would be pretty much my notes that I would say um that i would have for you guys um and i think now i think now it's just about really just being a patient trader and just being a patient just really investor i think the best investment years are really just now upon us right like taking a look like i said taking a look at the different investments capabilities that we have here right now um you know it is honestly it's it's amazing to be able to see you know how far you know certain companies have really came over the past couple of years right um super super amazing to see how far these companies have came over the past couple of years you know i'm looking at things from from my standpoint and um i see like i said just an opportunity for things to only go up from here right when taking a look at you know these certain companies uh so i think just having the patience right now is going to really be the probably the best thing moving forward you got to be patient you got to be the person that's patient you can't rush into things you can't feel like you got to accomplish everything in one day you know every take take it one trade at a time one day at a time i think that's my mentality taking it in one trade at a time one day at a time you know because where we're at now you know the market once again could trade sideways again and it could do it next year and it could just continue to trade sideways and not make all time highs, but nor not really make lows. So the companies that you're probably looking at right now that are trading sideways for six, eight, 12, 15, 16 months, understand that those companies are just really just building momentum. So I guess I would say the last thing, um, don't doubt, don't doubt the winners, man. Don't doubt the winners. You know, one of my one of one of my top things is 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 don't doubt the winners, right? Don't doubt the winners. The winners are gonna keep winning. And then for my traders out there, I one of my one of my favorite things is to always buy time, right? For those that know me, I, I love to put you know at least 30 days on, on any position that I take. I'm not really the big person uh when it comes to like you know the zero days or the weekly options. I think that stuff is like super risky, right? um and you know investing in the stock market period trading in the stock market period is a risk right um but i like to actually go ahead and you know buy options with you know at least 30 days till expiration or more i prefer even 45 right i like to have options that have a delta of a point 55 or more um i like my i like my options to also be in the money I prefer to only buy in the money options. I really refuse to buy out the money options because of high theta decay. So those are things that even from a trading strategy, you learn throughout time. Um, I was never the big out the money buyer um, of options, but just understanding the Greeks, right? You know, as 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 I matured as an investor and a trader, you know, it pointed me in the right direction. So those are all different strategies and different things that I would say that I personally um, really use to my advantage. Um, I, like I said, I really am the person that really loves to, uh, you know, utilize the Greeks now. Those are some of my top trading strategies. Understanding things like theta decay, right? Understanding what a theta positive is versus theta negative. You know, a theta positive trade is like when you're selling an option. So like I make money from theta if I sell a call, right? But I'm going to lose money on theta, right? If I bought a call or bought a put, right? And it's going against me. So like learning those different nuances, I think as well, and different strategies, experiences, like I said, for a beginner, 
is to just really let your journey be your journey. Try not to compare yourself to what somebody else made, right? One of the things that happens is I think a lot of times people are comparing themselves to, you know, this other person they're seeing. And maybe they might not, you might not have the results that that person may have right now. I think um, it's very dangerous to play the comparison game. So I, I, I would say that I was grateful, like when I first started, like I said, getting into investing and trading, it wasn't as big online as it is now where, you know, you guys see the stuff that happens on Twitter where people be fighting over trading groups and I don't know, silly stuff on Twitter, right? Um, you know, none of that was happening. So I felt like I was able to narrow in. Um, there was a couple, you know, people I think I checked out on um, YouTube here and there. And obviously you guys know the literature, uh, things like charting and technical analysis, just different books that trading in his own Mark Douglas, different books that, you know, I just came across over the years that I was just reading. So I think staying focused on what your overall goal is. And then also identifying one of the things that I could say, and this would be the last thing I say tonight. You have to identify your own risk tolerance. Some people are going to be super risky. Some people are not. Like everyone has a different risk appetite, you know, different risk, you know, flavor per se, right? So figuring out what your risk flavor is going to be, I think is, once again, I think it's super important. You know, you figuring out what your risk appetite and what your risk flavor is going to be. I think, in my opinion, it is so, so, so important. So that was, like I said, another thing that I realized, um, you know, over time was, um, you know, making sure that you're able to properly manage your risk tolerance. Uh, risk tolerance, risk tolerance, risk tolerance, super, super duper, like I said, super duper important. So that is what I have for you guys tonight, man. Um, you know, we're pretty much at the towards the end of earnings season here right now. Right. Earnings season is pretty much here, you know, coming to an end uh, for the, some of these major companies. We're going to start seeing the cloud computing and cybersecurity companies. You guys hear Uncle Charles talk about them a lot. You know, Snowflake um, the, in the cybersecurity and cloud computing companies. Uh, you saw Zscaler went up 20 percent today. So I would definitely be looking at some of those uh, cloud and, you know, some of those hyper growth names heading into their earnings reports. Um, they'll go ahead and, and, and be reported. But, you know, that's where we're at. Apple uh, was able to exceed earnings expectations. And you see how, you know, stock reacted last week. Once again, Apple is getting ready to head to three trillion dollars again. They're on the way. They're knocking on the door right now. They are going to break and break above three trillion market cap again expect that soon also um nvidia will have earnings on may 24th put that count put that on your calendar right now may 24th nvidia is having earnings pay attention to nvidia and amd if you look at them and you saw their performance today you saw how they were breaking out expect further upside ahead of nvidia's earnings amd is going back over 100 nvidia is going to crack 300. So we're right on the cusp of some big breakouts in some of our bigger tech names. These smaller names are kind of just going to trade sideways. They're trading sideways right now. They're not going to be moving the most and the best. It's the reality at this point in time. So, you know, I really think that, um, you know, I really think um, at the end of the day, you know, here right now, you guys have the opportunity once again to buy some of the world-class companies at the best prices. Right. Because in the future, right, don't sleep on Tesla. I like the fact that Tesla is quiet, like no one's talking about them. I like that. Like when the attention is off of a company, that's usually the best time to buy. When all the attention is on them and they're talking about them, that's usually the time you want to get out the way. Right. But the time, the, the quiet grind is what I really like. So don't sleep on Tesla, man. Um, you know, I know probably for some people, people like, yo, it's been disappointing, you know, et cetera, whatever. But um, don't sleep on them at all, man. Do not sleep on Tesla at all here, guys. You know, you guys have some amazing, amazing opportunities to take a look at and get these companies at some extremely discounted prices. So, you know, Tesla is here right now. It's it, it's it's not uh it's not the future anymore. Tesla's the now. So, um, you know, time's a ticking.
So I appreciate you guys for tapping into this episode here on the Come Up series. This was an episode based upon your top, my top five trading strategies, my experiences for you know beginners, and um, pretty much my journey, man. A little bit of my journey. So you know, I've uh, I see my good brother. Yep, company is fine. Sentiment in the market was trash. Yep. So man, be gobbling up and taking advantage of it. So we got things action pack. Hit that like button below share this video um you know what i'm saying we got shows pretty much here all week every single week right um you know this channel is full of information you know monday you know tuesday wednesday thursday like we got shows on top of shows providing value and information so send your send your family members over send your cousins right send your send your brothers send your sisters send your father send your mother your aunt your uncle send everyone over because the, the more that we're having conversations like this, the better that we make our communities, right? Um, a lot of times we we talk about doing certain things, but here on the Come Up series, we actually do those things, right? So super, super duper excited. Um, appreciative of you guys. We're going to go ahead and wrap. And um, you guys got the Tribal Chief tomorrow at 8.30 uh, p.m. EST, 5.30 PST. So Tribal Chief and Joe Lynn will take over on Tuesday night. So we appreciate y'all, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. I'll see you guys on Monday. Peace.